Are you ready for this shit to be spilled? Let's spilt some tits, some tea, some tea. <laughs> My very first listing, I pull up, they're out in the front yard. They're bawling, like crying upset. There's several cop cars there. I need to figure out what the hell happened here. This is what it looks like to help people buy and sell homes. Oh girl, there are some stressful moments in this job, I tell you. But I mean, at the turn of the day, we end up liking it. I'm in therapy, obviously. I'm doing a lot of self development. But one of the things, <laughs> cuckoo. I told you I was cuckoo. Mm -hmm. Girl, I don't fit in a box. I don't even fit in a circle. There, there are no boxes. There are no circles. <laughs> there are no geometric shapes for what this is. Did you see the press release that came out? I had, I took a massage today. It was a massage day, yeah. not a news day. Not a news okay. day. <laughs> but go ahead, tell me about it. Not like 60%, not 70%, not 90%, 100%. That's a game changer right there. And that solves a housing issue. Yeah. Wow, gold star. Way to go, HUD. Welcome to the Moxie and Jana Show. I mean, we are spilling some real tea up in her, okay? So we have aptly named our little show, Spilling Real Tea with Jana and Moxie. Get it? Tune in and listen to us share all our crazy, wildly unbelievable crap that we see, do, and navigate in the insane world of real estate. And we're talking everything. Oh, the stories we will share. Literally everything, down to the fails only us real estate agents could make. We got it all, y'all. Straight out of KC, and we spilling it. It's tea time, Moxie. Are you ready for this shit to be spilled? I'm ready, girl. Let's let's spill some tea. Let's spill some tit. Some tea. Some tea. <laughs> Or the other one, I whatever. Mean, if you're going to spill the titties, we have different conversation. I mean, I'm you just know, saying. Right now they're forgiven, so I don't know. That's what the shirt says. It says forgiven on it. That's a, there's some Blessed. irony in that, but I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> mm, you leave me alone. You leave me alone right now. <laughs> I mean. It really does. Look, it says it says forgiven. Forgiven. I know. I saw it earlier. <laughs> forgiven. True story. I just have to give you shit. That's also why it doesn't say perfect. Okay, pumpkin. <laughs> I thought you were going to say perky. No. <laughs> perfect. Oh, I can't. Mine would you. say unperked. Unperked. Yeah. Like, yeah. Unperked. I like it. You know, I like it. It is what it is. Anyway. Okay. <clears throat> wow. Spill the tea. That's what I meant to say. Spill the tea. Spill it. Let's kick us off today with story time. And I have kind of a doozy of a story to tell you. Okay. Let's hear it. I, it. Love some, I love me some doozies. Okay. Slightly controversial. Just a smidge. Perfect. I love those. <laughs> I know, right? So here we are. <clears throat> ready? <clears throat> ready? I'm, I'm listening. I'm ready for the tea. Give me the tea, okay. Jana. All right. Oh, so Lord. Now I'm nervous. Now I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. <gasps> okay. Hit me. Hit me. I have a story to share with you about my very first listing and the shit that happened before, during, and after. Are you ready for it? Okay. okay. I'm all ears. It couldn't be the weirdest listing appointment ever. I literally spent two and a half hours in these people's house, and it wasn't because they were asking questions. It was because I couldn't stop explaining everything. <laughs> my 17 articles just like spilled out into a two and a half hour fucking presentation. Love okay. that. They still hired me, so that was good. Yeah. <laughs> Because that could have been detrimental. <laughs> could have been great. Yeah. Still hired me. Really, really, really cool Tudor house is my first listing. And I was marketing the hell out of this house, girl. I mean, doing all the things, doing all the things. And I got a sign call from two gentlemen, a married couple that were interested in purchasing the home. So I took them. They were unrepresented. I brought them into the house, did the showing. We did like three showings, actually. They were paying cash. They wanted to make an offer. It was like, absolutely. So we write up the contract. Your, okay, wait, your first, first <laughs> listing, you are going to represent the seller and not represent the buyer on your first listing? Yeah. Ever. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness. What a catastrophe. <laughs> okay, please continue. It could have been worse. It really, really could have. It was pretty bad, but it could, but it could have been worse for sure. These clients came to me. They, they found me on social media. So it wasn't like I wasn't door knocking. I didn't know them. They weren't a referral. Like they were pure strangers. Okay. So I spent two and a half hours in these people's home trying to pitch them on hiring me. And I probably only needed to spend literally maybe like three minutes. <laughs> 
and they would have hired me. But I really needed to prove my worth at that point. So showing the house months on the market, this slower market at that time, but it had been on the market for probably 60 some odd days. And we had these gentlemen that wanted to write an offer. They were unrepresented. They were just the sweetest couple. I love them to pieces. They were incredibly adorable. They had this great like energy and they played off of each other really well. It was super fun. We go, we do inspections. We get, you know, all the title commitment. We get through all the things, right? All the parts of the transaction. I did not know that you should do a final walkthrough. <laughs> okay. That's okay. No one told me. That's that. okay. I didn't say that. In, I didn't laugh in a judging way. Oh no, you should have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. 100% did not do a walkthrough. Okay. Didn't know we needed to. My broker didn't tell me that. My coaches, my mentors, nobody, nobody told me you should do a final walkthrough. Dang. You know, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Okay. The closing was at the office where I officed out of. So I worked for a local brokerage that's part of a national network where I first started. And the title company we're using is in the actual office. So we're in the office. My sellers close first at like 9 a.m. And then at 10 o'clock, the buyers come in. We all close. Everybody seems really happy. I got both of my pictures. Like couldn't have known anything different. An hour after closing, I get a frantic phone call from one of the buyers. And he was like, Jana, I need you to come over. And I was like, okay, I, I can, I can head over right now. Is everything okay? What's going on? He's like, everything's not okay. The police will be here shortly. I need you to come. No. Like, uh, oh, can you tell me a little bit about what's going oh, on? No. <laughs> like, what big pile of shit am I about to step into? Yeah. And therein lies the rub. So seller clients were not happy that they were selling their house to a gay couple. Did not share anything with me, did not indicate they had any issues, no concerns, nothing. But, you know, when we write our contract, it's name and name AMC. A married, a married couple. couple. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So when I presented the offer to them, you know, I'm explaining so-and-so and so-and-so, married couple, you guys, did it, all the things, right? Didn't think anything of it because to me, that's not a big deal. But for some people, it is. So I'm talking to my broker. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened. I have no idea what I'm walking into. She's like, just go. I'm sure everything's fine. It's probably not a big deal. Maybe like a broken fence or something stupid. I was like, okay. I go over to the house. I pull up. They're out in the front yard. They're bawling, like crying, upset. There's several cop cars there. I walk up. I'm like, guys, what's going on? What happened? They're like, I don't even really know how to explain it to you. You're just going to need to go into the house. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Walk into the house. They had let their dog over the course of like a week poop everywhere. The volume of shit in that house and urine, I mean, it had to have been a week. <laughs> like it was disgusting. But that's not even the worst part. So like I said, they didn't, they never indicated to me they had any issues with selling their home to a, a couple in the community. They had wrote things like F-A-G on the wall. Oh, no. Poop. No. Oh, no. Picked up the poop smeared it on the wall. Oh, wow. Yeah. With their gloves and everything, they took the gloves off, dropped them on the floor. They had like weeks of garbage. But I mean, Moxie, the whole house, like multiple walls had slurs and all kinds of really unfortunate things. And I was mortified. Well, yeah, of course, because these are your sellers. Mortified. Yeah, these are your sellers. My sellers. And we didn't have a secondary agent involved. I helped these people. Like, I know them. I know their story. I went on to list and sell their house oh. after all of this. Wow. Also, by the way. So I, I'm standing there. The police are asking me for their contact information. And then I decide I'm going to call them. I'm like, hey, I just, I need to figure out what the hell happened here. I get on the phone and I call them. I called them religiously probably two to three times a day for like a week. They never took my call. They moved to a completely different state <sighs> when they left. Never answered my call. We are still friends on Facebook. <laughs> oh my gosh. Girl, we are still friends on Facebook. And I've talked about it. I have shared before about it and the whole nine yards. And they, they've never taken my call. No one's. Unbelievable. So what did the buyer end up doing? Cleaning the house. Oh. No charges could be filed because at that point they owned the home. Oh. They took possession. Oh no. Of the property, not knowing the condition. Right. We didn't do a final walkthrough. We should have. Yeah. Have they I sold that house since then? They love that house. Oh my God. Oh, this was good. their dream home. Aww. They've 
they have like a animal farm going over there. One of the guys is like really big into, gosh, what are they growing? Lots of plants, like a very, very big plant. Holder culturist. All of these. Holder culturist. Like an amateur, I guess. But. (laughs) Holder culturist. I don't even know if that's. uh, Holder culturist. I know I'm not saying it right. So whatever. Tell us what it's called. <laughs> but anyway, so like he grew all these plants. It was gorgeous. This house is amazing. Wow. I drive by there every once in a while. In fact, I have another listing coming up soon that's nearby. So I drove by and I'm like, oh my God, they are still there. And I talk to them all the time, you know. That's actually wonderful that they didn't let that experience completely taint their love for that home. Because that definitely yeah. could have tainted that for sure. Have you ever yeah. not done a final walkthrough again? Nope. <laughs> Lesson learned. Yeah, I demand it. I dem- I'm like, if you're not going to do it, here's a document that I'm going to need you to sign stating that you elected not to do a final walkthrough, Yeah, but we do it. Yeah. If nothing else, I do it. And I think that's the one big thing that I learned from that was that even if my clients aren't local, can't be there, can't get off work, whatever the case, we can't figure out the scheduling, whatever it is. I will always do it. Yeah. I will always stop by an hour before closing yeah. every time. Yeah. And that's smart. Buyer or seller. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. No, that's really smart. Nope. Never did that again. Wow. What a great first listing you had there. (laughs) Golly. One of these days, one of these days I'll have to tell you about my first buyer because it's, it smells really close to yours. There's no dog poop. I'm not going to lie. We'll save it. We'll save it. Why don't you use your most recent one? Which one? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Pick one. <laughs> oh, golly. There are too many to pick. There are too many. You know, the other day I was meeting with a new agent and we were out at lunch and he's the younger kid. He's going to join the team and he's going to join Real Broker and he's very excited. And my phone. Yeah, I know. We're so stoked. My phone would not stop. You know, you've been a real estate agent for long enough. Heck, even through these conversations, you've had to answer a couple of calls. I just had to mute a call. Sorry, dad. <laughs> You're later. Oh. But anyways, I'm answering <laughs> phone calls and text. <laughs> Sorry, dad. <laughs> just, Denied. Right? <laughs> If one right after another, right after another, and text messages, and tech, and then trying to have this conversation with this young man, and he sits back in his chair and he goes, "Gosh, all I want to do is sell houses. I don't want any of this broker stuff." And I do hold a broker's license, but I'm not an active broker, right? And so I literally put my phone down and I looked at him and I said, "I need you to understand, nothing that I'm doing right now is broker specifically related. This is what it looks like to help people buy and sell homes." He goes are you serious? I said, every phone call and text I'm taking right now has to do with buying and selling a home. I don't know if I rock that kid's world or not, but oh girl, there's some stressful moments in this job. I tell you, but I mean, at the turn of the day, we end up liking it. So whatever. Are we crazy? We love the crazy. We do. No, we love the crazy. I do. We like the drama. You know, I don't. We're the first people to put posts out talking about how we don't like fucking drama, mm-hmm. but we really do. I don't like like personal drama. I don't mind business drama, but I don't yeah, like yeah. I people don't like, drama. <laughs> yeah, I don't deal with the people drama. So on to the next little topic that we wanted to talk about. Topic? Topic that we wanted to talk about. One of the things that I hot think, topic. hot topic. One of the things that I think is so important that people aren't necessarily doing the right way is filling your calendar. So there's ways to fill your calendar with just a bunch of busy work, <laughs> right? Like, I'm not gonna yeah. lie, today I got a massage because I needed one. Oof, girl, I needed one. And I got my hair done because, you know. Yeah. These rows, they don't stay in place unless you get them done. But some people would consider that doing busy work. I consider that a little self-care, which is important. But hold up. What? When you say rows, are you are you talking about these are, like extensions? Yeah, these are or extensions. What, what are we talking about? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, these are extensions. Yeah, no, these this is not my <laughs> real hair. Because COVID took my hair. Like after COVID. COVID. Yeah, it it you was your hair out. it was horrible. It was like up to here. I was just losing hair by the handfuls. It was mortifying. I absolutely hated everything about it. So we did these and now I love them. So yeah. So these rows don't just stay. Okay, pumpkin. One of the things that I think is very interesting is you can, as a real estate agent, you can fill your day with like these stupid things, but and then you're like, oh, I'm so busy. But are you? You went to lunch with Sally for three hours. Are you busy? Or did you just fill up your calendar with non-money producing activities? Here's the thing that I've learned how to do. When I'm sitting in that chair getting my rose redone and getting this hair looking like 
Okay. I'm texting, right? I'm calling. I'm, I'm answering emails. Yeah. And, and though, I'm yeah, I'm working still. So I think one of the things that I, that people are misunderstanding is I want to be a real estate agent because I want to be able to work whenever I want. I want to make my own calendar. To me, when they say that, I want to That's just, I want to just take them and shake them. I know that's illegal and stuff and like we shouldn't do that, but- (laughs) Only if you're like under the age of 10. Yeah. They could defend themselves if they're adults and I literally want to shake them because- my calendar is not my own. It's, it's my clients. Yes. I have the option to say no, or I can't do it at that time. How about this time? But the reality is, is while I'm sitting in a chair, getting my hair done, we're still texting and talking like it just, it is what it is. So I say all that to say, work on not filling your calendar with mindless BS. That isn't actually a money producing activity. That's the key thing. So if you want to finish your year strong, totally the way to do it. Totally the way to do it. So what does your calendar look like? Do you time block or what do you do? Yeah. Like what's your big Yeah, I have a, secret? Well, I have a pretty hectic calendar. Like this week, somebody was trying to fit a luncheon with me and I was like, well, I have 45 minutes here. I have an hour and 10 minutes here. And then we'll talk in two weeks. I, I do a really good job of making sure that I'm at home in the evening. And so with that, I have to plan and be very methodical about my days. So if it's Friday, mm-hmm. I pretty much have until Thursday next week already mapped out on my calendar. So it's also Mm -hmm. laughable when people are like, Hey, what are you doing today? I'm like, I could have told you three weeks ago what I was doing today, (laughs) but I don't know. I've just, I've always done a really good job of filling my calendar with money producing activities and yes, some mindless stuff, which I think is important too. But the agents that are like, I'm so busy and there's no money coming in, or I'm so busy and there's no contracts. Is your busy work actually busy work Mm -hmm. or is it money producing activities? So, you know, Mm -hmm. just something to kind of think about. We have a rule in our household. If it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. Yeah, preach. So, so the kids will literally put on the calendar if they need me to drop them off or pick them up, me or dad, whoever they put on the calendar, pick up school 6 p.m. And it's a 15 minute calendar invite. You know what I mean? But if it's not on the calendar, nobody gets picked up. (laughs) You're walking your happy ass home. (laughs) Sorry, guy. I don't remember. It's true. It's true. He has had to do it I like several it. times. I forgot to put it on the calendar. I'm busy, bro. Yeah. I'm going to have to walk. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we, we, everything is on our calendar, but I, t- so I time block a couple things specifically every day. So I time block lead generation every day. I have a two hour time block to do that. I time block, I do happy birthday videos, or I try to at least do two or three happy birthday videos every morning on social media. So that's like from nine to nine 30, I probably need to time block some personal self-development. Yeah, girl. I probably need to, to time block that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but I don't, I don't. And I could totally use a massage. <laughs> <laughs> I got a girl. Her so name's Jade. Your girl. Her name's Jade. She's in Lee oh. Summit at, if you Jade. can believe this, she is at Massage Envy of all places. And let me just tell I you. I love Massage Envy. Girl, I have gone around the world getting massages. I mean, to the beaches of Fiji. You're in a, a connoisseur. For real. In a hut in Fiji on the beach. And let me tell you, they were massaging us with cooking oil. And every time I left there, I was hungry for Chinese food. It was ironic, but Ew. it was, yeah, but it was, Ew. but it was also, no, don't you judge. Don't you judge. But we went every single day that we were there. So I have for real got massages all around the country, all around the world. And this chick, she is doing work on her massages. She it's, it's incredible. She is the best masseuse I've ever been to in my entire life. So Jade massage envy, Lee summit, do it, but don't completely do it. Cause I need to slide in there too. So. She'll butter you up like a turkey ball. Oh, girl, she's amazing. Just kidding. Oh. You're a connoisseur of masseuses. I have to be. Smelling like chicken. I didn't say chicken. I said... That's, that's the image I got. It reminded me of... Chinese food. <laughs> fried rice. Okay? <laughs> I wanted... Fr- no. Every time I left that hut, I wanted fried rice. <laughs> True story. Fuck me. Yeah. No. no, it was it was cooking oil. It was cooking oil. There is no doubt. But it was on the beach in Fiji. You're on a hut over the ocean. You're hearing the ocean come in. 
it's not loud because they have this barrier on that side of the the island. And so the the ocean actually crashes like further out. So it's really light, Mm. but they were using cooking oil. I don't know if it was used. I'm not going to lie. I think it kind of was. But every time I left there, stop it. Every time I left there, I wanted to go get fried (laughs) rice. I'm not kidding. Your drippings off the table were saved and recycled for future use. Whatever. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) I don't even care. I mean, it was good. Did you at least have a good drink? Like, was it actually? I, f- I just know, went like a mai tai or something. No, I I legit. Fruity? I just went and found fried rice every time after I was done because it's what I wanted. <laughs> True story. <laughs> mm, yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah. So well, on that note, what are you doing for your whole self development kick stuff you got going on lately? I've got a heavy. Yeah, girl, I've got a lot. Like. Obviously, I do a lot of self-care. Tomorrow, I'm getting a facial Mm. because I think it's important Mm. to take care of yourself. I'm also in a lot of therapy. I've never had a facial. Mm. Be careful where you go. The first couple I went, I hated them. They make you glow. And they put a lot of moisture Mm. in, which I think is fantastic too. Mm. But anyways, I'm in therapy, obviously. I'm doing a lot of self-development. But one of the things... Cuckoo. I told you I was cuckoo. One of the cuckoo, things, cuckoo, cuckoo. that's right. One of the next things that I'm going to do is I'm going to read this book that I was just told to read mm-hmm. by my therapist, Cody. I'm allowed to divulge that information, right? He's not allowed to tell his, yes, but I can tell He can't him. talk about you. Cody, you Cody, about. Cody. This guy will change your life if you'll let him. Untamed is the book. I cannot wait to read it. The little snippet that I listened to yesterday is like a, you know how they give you a sample little part that they read. Mm -hmm. She's at the zoo with her daughter. She's, she's somewhere with her daughter and they're looking at a cheetah and a dog comes out and they're like, do you think this is a cheetah? No, obviously not. It's a dog. Well, when you see the cheetah, what you will see is she does everything that the dog does. If the dog chased something, the cheetah chased something. They were raised together. So the cheetah thought that it was a dog, right? The daughter says, doesn't the cheetah miss being in the wild? And the caretaker says she doesn't miss being in the wild because she never knew what the wild was. She was raised here on the grounds. She never lived in the wild. Mm -hmm. So the little girl, she asks her mom, like, do you think that she misses it? Do you think she remembers it? Obviously, she didn't. Well, then all of a sudden, the cheetah kind of went off onto her own. And the mom started watching the cheetah just go back and forth, pacing back and forth. And the mom in her head thought to herself, that cheetah just turned wild. It's no longer a companion of this dog. It just turned into its normal nature. Because the cheetah can never be anything but a cheetah. It is ingrained in them to be a cheetah. And the daughter goes, mommy, did that cheetah just get wild? And you could just tell that this cheetah just turned into something different. And the the sad part is some of us have cheetah inside of us, Mm -hmm. but we have been trained to be in this case, dogs, right? We have been trained to to harness that wild side of us because we're supposed to fit into this little box. Mm-hmm. Girl, I don't fit in a box. I mean, and so what I've been trying to figure, I, I can't, there, there are no boxes. There are no circles. <laughs> there are no so geometric this, shapes for what this is. Yes. And this, <laughs> and this lady, essentially what she figured out was like, she was sad for this cheetah for having to be something that it wasn't, Mm. for having to tame this wild side. So Mm. this book, Untamed, basically is showing the journey of this woman that she goes through to realize she's kind of been put in this box her whole life. The cheetah with the dog was the representation of that box. And then the cheetah pacing back and forth and turning into what it actually is, is the representation of kind of her learning and leaning into her cheetah side. Mm. So I'm going to read this book and I'm going to figure out how to re cheetah myself because sometimes people want to put you in a box because they don't know you. They don't understand you. Mm. Girl, we're going to cheetah out. Okay. I'm surprised I'm not wearing cheetah today. I know. So anyways, for realsies, I'm very excited about this book. No, I will be doing a review on this book just so y'all know. I was kind of wondering where it was going. I'm like, okay, well, what is the point of this book? Like, are they teaching you how to fit in or how to stick out? And I think it's stick out, but I'm not sure. They are. (laughs) It is. Yeah. No, they're teaching you. She's teaching you actually not even how to stick out because I think cheetahs or people like myself and like you, why you should lean into Mm -hmm. that. Like I, I give feedback quite often that I give really bad first impressions. Well, it's because I'm a lot sometimes (laughs) and I'm aware of that, but it's also because the world doesn't know how to accept somebody that's as 
oof, I'm just, I'm in your face, but it's with confidence, but it's also with love. Yeah. And it's also with an understanding. Look, my dad is calling me again. Dad, I will call you when I'm done. So anyways, I'm excited about this book because I want to learn how to lean into that and not be afraid of it because the world is already afraid of potentially that part of some people. I think I've heard of this book before and I, I love the premise. I think it's a great story. And I, I actually think I've listened to a couple podcasts about it. Oh, cool. I'm excited to hear about it. Yeah. Hmm. I think it'll be cool. When you come, when you come to the next meeting, you'll be like, meow. Hopefully. Instead of, meow, meow. Be, Please meow. accept me. Meow. I'm going to be like, I don't care. <laughs> Rawr! Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> True <laughs> story. Leave. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel. True story. Things. Which makes you kind of sound like an arrogant jerk. But at the end of the day, it's just coming from self-love and confidence. Like, I don't know what else to say. Well, and I think, I mean, just to like position that a little bit, it's not about like being this unabashed, psycho, scary person. It's about recognizing your inner strength, letting yourself come out and and be who you are. Yeah. But the Naturally. world, but and, but and accept yourself, yes, you know, because other people won't. But the, and that's the last part of it, right there. Is like the world always is kind of like, ooh, she's too much, or her confidence is mm. arrogance, or like I get so many random things from people, and I get it. You think I have a bad first impression, Jana? I love. Are people telling you that? Oh yeah, it happens consistently. But here's the thing, I love um, fuck myself you very much. That would be my response. Uh, but it's, it's not, I, I'm trying to use it as like a self-development, right? So if I can, okay. if I, I can, like, I like your spin. Yeah. If I can lean into it, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. But on the turn of that, I love myself. I love every single thing about myself. And uh, that confuses people. When I was 245, I loved myself. I have a great amount of confidence and it's not fake. It's not in your face. It's not just look at me, look at me. I just absolutely love everything about who I am. That confuses people. That makes mm. people not. It's unusual. They don't, yeah, they don't, they don't know how to deal with that. Especially when you're a plus size woman, like, Oh, aren't you supposed to have insecurities? Mm. Girl, mm -mm. no, you will not see a whole lot of insecurities in me. And it's, it is from a true self love and such a deep mm. understanding of who I am that I've learned about myself. I've leaned into myself and I'm still developing who I am. But, yeah. but with that, the normal human gets kind of confused with that. And so I get a lot of pushback on a That's pretty true. regular basis of, oh, she's too much or, oh, she's arrogant. Like, it's so frustrating when I get those comments because I'm over here like, bro, I'm just in love with myself and I'm, I'm trying to love on other people. And so anyways. And working my ass off, making... Good shit happens for great people. Yes. And leaning into Thank my, you very much. and leaning into my team <laughs> and leaning into my talents and leaning into my circle. And it's like, know me for five seconds and you won't be like, oh, she's an arrogant jerk. But I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's the first impression I give to people, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm excited to hear about this book. So me that's too. Awesome. Me too. Oh my gosh. Okay. So did you see the press release that came out from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development? I had, about I took a massage FHA today. and ADUs. I got a massage you took a massage. Yeah. It was a massage day, yeah. not a news day. Not a news okay. day. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. Tell me about it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, so HUD basically came out and said that anyone that is getting an FHA loan can now count the income of an ADU, which is an accessory dwelling unit, like an apartment over your garage or your shed in the back you turned into a tiny home or whatever it is, you can actually rent those out, right? Mm -hmm. And you have income, you have rental income. Well, previously, FHA would not allow you to even buy that home if it had an ADU, let alone count the income from said ADU. They've released at stating all the new guidelines and everything are there. If someone wants to use their FHA loan to buy a home that has an ADU, they will utilize the income from that ADU and count it toward your DTI. What? So it counts as income. Toward, toward your, your debt to income calculation. Toward your debt to income. What? Yes. What? Yes. I mean. That's like a game changer. And it's straight income. So like normally when you're evaluating an, an investment property, you're looking at the DSCR, the debt service coverage ratio, right? Does the rent cover property interest, you know, property taxes, interest, mortgage, all of that, right? That's what it's looking for. Homeowners insurance is the other thing. That's typical. This, it doesn't count that way. 
No one's looking at the separate mortgage on this ADU. No one's looking at the separate, there's no separate taxes. There's no separate mortgage. It's all one property, right? So basically if you're renting that unit for $800 a month, that's $800 a month. It's counting towards your income. A month. A month. So a hundred percent of it. Unbelievable. Not like 60%, not 70%, not 90%, a hundred percent. That's pretty impressive. I mean, that is, that's a game changer right there. Well, and if you think about like how to apply it, encouraging your sellers to put in ADUs will increase the value of their property. It will increase the likelihood of a sale too, potentially. Yeah. As long as you're not in Kansas City proper and trying to use it as an Airbnb, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because of all those And guidelines. if you do it in Lee Summit, you'll be fine because you're on the same property. That. The two worst cities right now for short-term rentals. So. Wow. That's huge. So does that apply to VA no. as well? No, nope, this is just FHA just as far FHA. as I understand currently. Gotcha. I imagine if it, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. I'll, I'll go and verify, but I know right now it's just FHA. So that's, I mean. Because it's a HUD program, not a Veterans Administration program. Yeah. Well, the cool thing is, is like for FHA, you can buy one to four units, right? So they have mm-hmm. to be conjoining units. They can't be separated right. units. So you can't buy a, a a duplex here and a duplex here, even if they're on the same tax parcel, you can't do that. That, that, mm-hmm. that happens to turn into a commercial loan, unfortunately. But if you have a fourplex, anybody can buy a house with FHA as long as they qualify for that loan. If, if, and when before you had a house with an, a, an ADU on it, it didn't qualify, which I never understood because if you can buy a one to fourplex, why doesn't it qualify for the same thing? So the interesting thing about that is a one to fourplex, you also have to have all of those units rented. Like you have to have active lease agreements on all of those units in order to count that income. Except for one. Right. Except for one. One has to be open so that you can move into it once yeah, you close. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to primary, it has to be your primary occupant, yeah. primary residence. Yeah. yeah. So one unit has to be available because it doesn't, it has separate addresses, like mailing addresses, I think is part of it. And it's attached. Whereas these separate units with an ADU will be honestly where I think people are going to feel it the most is California. I mean, we have a housing shortage across the nation, period. But in California, it's really, really, really bad. Yeah. And we don't, and we don't really not have... able to buy those. Yeah. And we don't really have a lot of ADUs here. I mean, I know there were in like Shawnee and Overland Park and stuff, in those older homes, there's carriage houses. But ADUs haven't... Same thing in Northeast or... Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Even Jackson County has a lot of ADUs. Yeah, but it's, it's not like a common... It's not, in my opinion, it's not as common as an over the garage apartment that you're going to see on the West Coast. That's super common. It's not that it doesn't happen here. It's just not as common. Yeah. Well, and I think ADUs sprung up in popularity because not only that there wasn't housing available, there's not land available to build housing unless you go up, right? And so there's so many high rises, there's all kinds of zoning and FAA and blah, 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 all kinds of things associated with it. Whereas if you have a single family home with a backyard garage, you could put a unit over it and that solves a housing issue, Yeah. right? So it's, I mean, it helps address housing issues. It helps address getting first-time home buyers into homes much more easily. Multi-generational living. Yes. Big, big yeah. freaking deal. So pretty awesome yeah. on that front. I'm super excited about that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Gold yeah. star. Way to go, but bud. <laughs> I hear we, right? I hear we have some local news to catch up on. We do. We do. Local news time. Okay. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about. So I went to the Chiefs game on Thursday. Okay. If you know this, they played the Donkeys, a.k.a. the Broncos, and they won. Um, I said sorry. the Donkos. <laughs> the Donkos. Not the Broncos, the Donkos. But guess who was there? Slip. Guess who was there? Taylor Swift, right? Swifty? Right, right. So mm-hmm. I went to the game. It was great. I come home. I watched the footage, and I, they showed her a couple of times. But here's the coolest part ever, okay? The first time she came to the game, she was in our same exact okay. row. She was directly behind us. And this time, she was on the 50-yard line. So she was quite a few down. But here was the coolest, cutest, most adorable thing that they did not catch on camera, as far as I can see. Her and Daddy Kelsey, or Mr. Kelsey, Daddy or whatever Kelsey. you want to call her. You know, we call her Mama Kelsey. Daddy Kelsey sounds, I mean, you know what I'm trying to say, Dad Kelsey, whatever. Her and Dad Kelsey, she was showing him stuff on her phone and they were engulfed in this like, you're meeting the dad for the first time. You're trying to be the good girlfriend or whatever you want to call it. 
you're trying to engage him in conversation. She's just a normal person, but it was so cute to see her like all up in that phone. Like, Oh yeah, this is this and this and this. It was so adorable to watch her really care about his family and really lean into the fact that she was meeting mom and dad. I know she had already met mom and Kelsey, but it just was so cute. I saw it and it just made my a little tiny heart just blow up with love because I think it's so precious. So Aww. anyways, something that nobody else saw. I mean, people saw it, but nobody talked about it. I just thought it was worth talking about. It was so cool. Do you think maybe she was showing him how to check his email? Who cares what she was showing him? She was showing him something and it was so cute because <laughs> I mean, I think about me and my father-in-law, like there's times where he and I are engulfed in a conversation where he's showing me a picture on his Mm. phone. And that just to me is just a closeness. And it's a, I care that you care, you care that I care. Let me show you something. Let me teach you something. Who knows what it was, but Mm -hmm. it was just a precious moment. And I just was, I was just head over heels in love with it. It was such a cute moment. So anyways, that's, you got it on tape. I didn't get it on video because we were so far away. My phone is garbage mm-hmm. with that. If I had had my husband, I would have, but it was just a precious moment. I thought it was great. So, Aww. and then they're holding hands and he's protecting her in New York and I'm in love. So anyways, Come but on. the other bit of news is I heard that the Hunt's family was purchasing the plaza. And in that I, I don't know where they are in that. I, don't, I, I, I heard they may have already done it or they were really close to it. I'm not really sure. I'm talking through it. Facts check somebody else, okay? Because my facts sometimes are a little off. But hey. if they are, I mean, that's what you're for. I don't know. If they are, <laughs> <laughs> you like facts. I don't know. I like. Let me just find that shit out for yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Google it. Goggle it. But. I did read a really cool article that was talking about new ownership of the plaza wants to turn it very local minded. So they wanted to put in some high end stores that we don't have here, which is not local minded. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But then they also wanted to focus on kind of like what made in KC does. And they, you know, local artists, local grow, local make, all the fun stuff. So yeah, they're going to put in some high-end stuff, maybe like a Gucci store that was on the list. But they also want to focus on maybe some more local people, which I think is great. The plaza is phenomenal. I love the thought of them buying that. They love this community. Their roots are in this community. I just thought it was cool. Well, Moxie, this was fun. Yes, it was. Spilling all the tea. Yeah, girl. Out here just spilling the teats. The tea. (laughs) That one was on purpose. (laughs) You know, when it works, it works. (laughs) I won't, I won't, I won't continue to say that. I promise. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We know you're probably potty watching or avoiding doing something domestic today. And we're glad you found us instead. If you've got a crazy real estate story to share, burning questions you want the real tea spilt on, or maybe you want to sponsor our little production, we want to hear from you. Shoot us an email so that we can collaborate. And until next time, guys, we'll be a hot mess. And uh, you keep doing you, boo-boo. Make it a great day.